So, so this, the first pixel on your screen, the resulting pixel, is sort of centered here. And then the next pixel, well, it's still red, green, and blue. It's just this red, green, and blue right here. And then the next pixel on your screen is just this red, green, and blue right here. So every single different colored pixel on the, on the sensor is being used as the center of a pixel that results on your screen. And that creates this you know, multiplication effect on your lens. So if you're using a 100 millimeter lens and you're in zoom 300%, now you have effectively a 300 millimeter lens. Okay? And that can be extremely powerful in applications where you know, if you have a situation you know, particularly important in, in horse racing, which I know you guys don't get into much, but if you ever do any rowing events, sometimes the the boats can be very far away. So, now we're going to just sort of talk about the difference between that and a trilinear. So what happens is the Japanese people who make these sensors think to themselves, well, you know, the problem is that these are really hard to make. Okay? Because, as I was saying, the these things are only 10 microns you know, square, okay? and they have to like the way these the way the, the way the sensor works is it's it's just got this you know this substrate in the uh, underneath that turns the electron the photons into electrons, and they put this filter over the top, okay? like a little you know clear piece of plastic you might see it or it's a stained glass window, okay? and they they just sort of deposit this little filter over the top of it. So that only the red, the green, and the blue fall through. The problem is that when you're trying to do that on this really, really tiny area, it's really hard and stuff sort of sloshes around. It doesn't really fall in the place if you want it to, whatever. So they think, well, why don't we just make three different rows, a red, green, and a blue row, and then we can just kind of slosh this stuff on top of it. We'll just throw a big red blob on this line and a big green blob on the other line, and you know, it'll be much easier to manufacture. So, the reason why the trilinear sensors started coming into favor was because, basically, they're easier to manufacture. And for the common application for these sensors, which is essentially flatbed scanners, right, no, one, no one cares. Right? Because in a flatbed scanner, you can control the speed of the, of the bar as it passes over the whatever it is that you're scanning. Right? And if you can control the speed, then you don't really care that that all of the lines are in the same place. We have a slight, we have a, a problem because you can't control the speed of, of the person as they cross the, the plane of the finish line, right? So what this does, as you've all seen, is that if you've ever used a uh, either a um, 2000 um, 5L200 version or a fusion camera, is that anything that isn't moving through the plane at a constant speed has some color blur. And that's basically, and the other thing you've seen, which is sort of even more common, I guess, or more obvious, is that getting a, a pure white background on a finish line is very difficult because, you know, you, you can't get that red, green, and blue line to all point at the same point, right? Unlike here, where this is, you know, this, you can align perfectly to a finish line. With this one, what you're essentially doing is aligning the green line, okay. and then you know if you're if you're white if your finish line is wide enough and your you know the camera is located in such a way that you know you're you can actually see the whole line, then you, the the red and the blue sort of come together and you actually see, you might see white at the bottom and then it starts getting you know a little colored at the top and things like that, right? It doesn't affect the timing accuracy or anything like that. It just makes it so that the picture is not as pretty looking as it, as it is with a, with a couple of your sensors. So, <clears throat> with, with that in mind, the thing to think about is that, so, so these, again, in a, in a Fusion Nora um, uh, Ethelinx 2000, these pixels are, again, roughly, they're, they're 10 and a half microns in that case. In the original 5L200, the most common camera that I was talking about, 
Zoom 100% is actually what's shown on, on the top, okay, which is actually two adjacent reds, two adjacent greens, and two adjacent blues combined together to make one pixel on your screen. So it's, it's effectively a 21 micron high pixel. The reason we did that actually, there are two reasons we did that at the time. One of which is that if you look here, the, the, um, these two camera models have a, have a um, not as, as big a computer as effectively. So they can't handle as much data. So we kind of had to, we just couldn't handle as many pixels as we could in, in the later models. The other of which is that turn, creating a 21 micron pixel turned out to be easiest for people to think about when transitioning from the 5100 because the 5100 had a 21 micron pixel. So you didn't have to think about like whether I needed new lenses or different lenses if I was you know, working at the same location. Um, what it does when you're dealing with a collinear sense, with a, with a trilinear sensor is that there's this spacing, and this, this spacing is, is uh, there's three pixels essentially between here and here of distance. And why that matters is <coughs> the, the closer those lines are, the, the more, the easier it is for the camera to compensate for that time gap. Because what's going on here is that when the, when the camera takes this picture, like I said, the green line is, is the one that's lying on the, on the finish line doing the timing, and then the red and the blue lines are being pulled in, they're being either delayed or advanced, okay, by some number of frame times in order to get the picture to look right, okay, and that's all happening, you're not doing anything, you're like, I mean, that just happens, okay, but that's why it's so much more important in a, in a, a fusion camera, or a um, 50200, to get the frame rate right, right, because if the frame rate isn't right, then that time alignment turns out to be not right, and then you get a lot more color frame data and it looks out of focus. So, last thing on this, with a fusion camera, which can do zoom 200%, all that's happening is we're just using one pixel out of each of the rows. The thing to think about here is that not only do you have that effect of light, you know, sort of the effect on the, the um, quality of the, of the picture due to simply not using as many pixels for each um, resulting pixel on your screen. What it does is it, in this case, in the top case there, combining pixels vertically actually makes the sensor appear to have the lines physically closer together. So you actually are going to get less color blur and sharper images out of a zoom 100% than you will out of a zoom 200%. Okay, because at a zoom 200%, you're actually, you know, those pixels actually are that far apart. And with a zoom 100%, the way to think about it, again, sort of draw a circle around the center of that, of that area, okay? And it makes it seem like those lines are, are, are physically closer together. Now, the, <laughs> of course, in the old days, back when I knew how to use PowerPoint, I could actually make the little things come up one at a time. <laughs> but about 2 a.m. last night, I decided that that part of my brain must have must have been replaced by something more important. And uh, so all my all my bullets are just coming up at the same time. Um, so specifics about resolution, um, in my opinion, um, more pixels are always better. If your camera has if it can do a thousand pixels, if it can do 500 pixels, whatever, you should be trying to do whatever you can with respect to camera placement and lens choice and lens settings to maximize that, to get, to be using as many pixels as possible for interesting stuff. That is, 